Welcome everybody to the Be Revolutionary Podcast. I am your host, Andrew Perry. This is episode six with my co-host, Emily Berry. Thank you very much for joining us today. And Emily Tropea, our guest for today. Thank Hi. you very much. I know your days are super jam-packed and super busy. They are lately. Um, so we really appreciate you coming on the show. Uh, Emily Tropea is our general manager of Revel Realty, and uh, I'm excited to get to know her a little bit better because you're so busy we never actually get to sit and chat so uh thank you very much that's right emily take it how's your week been so far uh, my week so far still didn't cut my hair i'm still <laughs> suffering from you know haven't been to the nail salon the haven't dreaded been to hair. COVID I, i'm hair. okay i'm, I'm accepting like a flat it flat iron at your house I've, right there. excuse whoa are we gonna cut that out so i haven't straightened my hair in probably five months that's yeah. the running joke in my house but i'm determined not to i'm embracing my COVID hair it's mm-hmm. it's frizzy As it's, you should. it's normal i'm trying to embrace it and hopefully i won't wreck my streak and straighten my hair but this is not about me today and my hair <laughs> Um, <laughs> this is about Emily Tropea. I'm so excited to have oh, you on. Man. We're going to have fun today. This is her first podcast. I remember yeah. my first podcast when you yeah. asked me to podcast yeah. and I was so nervous. Yeah. So you're actually doing a lot better than me. I was freaking out. Right well, now. on our first podcast, you had, we had like an hour drive. So I can yeah. imagine how the nerves were like. Yeah, it kind of built like, up and, and it was terrible. You just kind of built it up in your head, right? And I was by myself but with him in this fine. dark like room and it was weird. Yeah. So this is, this is more, <laughs> this is brighter. <laughs> Me and right? my dark rooms. <laughs> that was so bad. <laughs> yeah. We have fun on the Revolutionary Podcast. So Emily Tropea is on today. Yep. Emily is Emily T. I'm Emily B. B. Mm-hmm. That's how we get distinguished. So the first week Emily started, I remember Ryan freaking out going, oh, am I going to like, oh, they're both Emily's. What do I say? Like, uh, E.T., E.T., okay, and you're E.B. <laughs> yeah, I know. Now he's going into the, yeah. Is, the, that, what, the is that what he still thing. does? E.T. and E.B.? I don't. I think he, he just he calls M me Tropea. Yeah. yeah. He just like bellows our last names. It's like Barry. Yeah, or, I'm tropes. Unfortunately, tropes. Yeah, tropes. Yeah. I can see that. Tropes. But I have to sign my emails now with management. M- Emily, I'm B. always MT. I, yeah. E-M-T. Yeah. 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 Oh, so yeah. Emily's <clears throat> younger Emily coming in. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when you were hired. And I remember going, Ryan, tell me all about you. He was so excited. He's like, oh, yeah, she's great. She's amazing. She's coming. She's going to organize everything. And she's going to help us out so much. And she's young and fresh. And I'm just like, what am I going to be like the old Emily? <laughs> like the yeah. older as in I was here first, but I'm yeah. also older than you. But Aww. anyway, I'm going to introduce her. <laughs> Age is just a number. Um. Yeah. It's just a number. Um, so Emily... I had a couple words for you here. Ambitious, creative, and motivated. Wow. Because I don't think Ryan would have hired anybody without those three qualifications. But I want to first ask you, um, well, let's let's go into your background. Sure. Let's go into your background. Um, I have here that you were raised in Kitchener. Yep. You have a passion for travel, art, music, and design. I do. And cooking, which we'll talk about later. Wow. <laughs> and you graduated from University of Guelph. So do you want to That's tell right. us your background and what brought you to apply for the position at Revel? Sure. So yeah, as Em just mentioned, I went to University of Guelph. I actually took the real estate and housing program. So I knew fairly oh, wow. early on that That's I was cool, interested right? yeah. in real estate, right? Um, and it's close to home. So it was kind of an easy decision for me. Um, I was in the co-op program. So I ended up doing a couple terms with CBRE, which is a commercial real estate brokerage oh, wow. um, in both Toronto. And then I ended up in Kitchener, which is my hometown, obviously. Mm-hmm. Worked there for a few years doing sort of marketing, deal processing, research, all that kind of stuff, really getting to know the industry. Um, and then from there, I actually transitioned into the tech world. So if you're not aware, Kitchener Waterloo is kind of a bit of a tech hub. Yeah, yeah. Um, I had a lot of friends that worked in tech and I've always just wanted to try my hand at it. So I was in tech for about a year. Um, and then I found myself really missing the real estate component of, you know, actually utilizing my education. Um, So I ended up at, uh, most recently before Revel, um, a brokerage called Condo Culture, which kind of blended the tech and the real estate together. Mm -hmm. Um, They're very tech forward. They're very brand, there's a huge emphasis on branding um, and utilizing tech. So that was sort of the best of both worlds. That's so Um, much. Yeah. Did you even know there was a, (laughs) did you know there was a real estate and housing like like program, program? Um, like she's like way she's two... more knowledgeable than than me <laughs> that's like, what i was saying I, yeah. I didn't take any post secondary should... with real estate that's phenomenal and so yeah. when ryan saw your resume mm-hmm. 
Like what did he call you? Did you apply? What happened? No. So my husband and I recently got married and we decided that, um, when the time comes to start a family, we want to be close to his parents and his family. So we decided to move to Niagara Falls. Okay. So obviously question number one is where am I going to work? What am I going to do? So I did some high level research on, and this was last fall. This right? was last. Yeah. Like late summer fall. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And just did some high-level research and immediately Revel stood out to me, um, just even from a branding standpoint. Right away, like the yeah. first impression I got was modern, cool, tech-driven, young. Just It just really stood out it to would me been versus a good match, yeah. more of the traditional brokerages, for sure. Okay, cool. So I actually reached out to Ryan. Yeah, that's what I was... Oh, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know the story. So this is great. So it's just out of the blue. I said, hey, Ryan, um, this is my background. You know, I have a lot of real estate administrative experience. Um, any chance you guys are looking for some management or some See, I didn't know positions? that because at that time, going, we had a really busy 2019, like huge yeah. growth, shuffling staff. Um, we were... We were in need of something. We yeah. were in need of somebody to kind of look at all of it and 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 uh, like assess it all and restructure it and put in systems. Yeah. System. <laughs> system. Yeah, there was systems. a new word. Uh, so you know when that you brought in with you. Yeah, system. So like Ryan's like really creative and he's got yeah. his strengths, right? And so is Nikki. And like I bring in this whole element with the training, but like all of us. You know, there was so much going on and nobody really like Still taking control too, over right? all of it, right? And that and being their 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 job. Like yep. that's yep. the only thing they focus on. Yep. So at the time, even though you didn't see a posting, like we were in need of that. Mm -hmm. So yep. that's just that's amazing. And I remember the first time I met you. <laughs> It was the Christmas party. Yeah, that's right. And you probably yes. thought I was like I, I had had a couple too many well, we drinks. Well, we were several drinks in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but, but I, I hadn't. But I like I ran up to you and I like hugged you. I still like, remember what you said to me. It, it, you were like, we're going to be friends. I and think I, I, like, I think I okay. said, you're going to be my best friend. Yeah. And she was probably like, this woman is yeah. crazy. <laughs> who is this, who is this girl leeching on me? Yeah. Just peel her off me. <laughs> um, but I was just so excited that, that they found somebody that met the criteria so much. I was yeah. so excited for the new year. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's all, that's all great. Um, now, tell us maybe, we're going to jump around a little bit today. Sure. Um, how you heard about Revel, we did that. So... You were at Revel probably about a month before yeah. kind of uh, everything kind of hit, right? right. So yeah. that's a lot to take on, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So already trying to restructure everything. You were busy. You were there late nights. I remember yep. with you some nights, you yeah. and Ryan, we were there at eight, nine o'clock. Um, and, and then all of a sudden, like, a pandemic hit the globe. Yep. <laughs> so tell us about, you know, your initial thoughts and maybe what you did that first week. Well, first off, I think that Revel was actually more equipped to sort of res respond to this sort of thing, um, more so than maybe more traditional brokerages, just right. in that um, we were already quite tech driven. And I think yeah. um, just being younger, more innovative, um, people are sort of, they take to the tech software a little bit easier. So I had already put some systems in place. So obviously moving up to the Google drive, yeah. um, introducing an internal mm -hmm. communicator, mm -hmm. which was Slack. Um, those were sort of already in the works, which sort of allow you to work remotely. Yeah. Everything's hosted on the cloud, um, facilitating better conversations between agents, um, organizing those conversations into channels. So mm -hmm. right away, those two tools were super helpful. And to those were like February, touch. right? I would say yep. February, yeah. we introduced yep. Slack, the, the, the Google yep. drive, the share drive with all of our resources. Yep. So like as a company growing, we we were always like emailing things back to each other and then we had Dropbox for a while and then Emily exactly. comes in and says, yeah. what are you doing with Dropbox? Just, yeah. Dropbox. No. <laughs> Safari. Safari. Right. What's Get going Safari. on here? Uh, <laughs> I remember you took my laptop once in the boardroom and you're like, no, no, right. no. Right. Delete, just delete. Here. Work. It's all fixed. And I'm just like, what did you just do to Yeah. I just wanted to get us on a suite <laughs> of applications that work well together. Um, I just mm -hmm. think that everything works seamlessly mm -hmm. um, and we were well prepared then to and work And it was right on time because all of that hit us and then we were all I know, Online. I hate to say it, but the timing was, was good in that yeah. it all kind of worked out that we were kind of prepared. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you, sh you, sh you started working from home right away. You, you were still working for yeah. Revel, organizing all of us yeah. working from home. I worked from home for about two and a half months, I think. Mm -hmm. So um, that was different. But, I mean, we had the tools. We were able to keep in touch. We were video conferencing every day. Everything, yeah, yeah. yeah. we were able to edit things in real time together. So... It just, well, I think you're selling out. yourself a little short because although we had the tools, uh, you know, we had those tools 
accessible right. before you came, <laughs> right? But as Ryan actually says, Ryan actually says, there's yeah. uh, two types of people, an innovator and an implementer. Yeah. So we had all the innovation. Right. Implementer. Somebody to implement. And we used That's to say right. that all in 2019. We would be, be there late at night and Ryan just like, we just need someone to implement these ideas because yeah. we get these great ideas. How, isn't it funny like how long you can talk about implementing yeah. and you're not implementing? Can I tell a and quick story? I, I got to tell a quick story. <laughs> One of the first meetings we had with me, you, Joe, mm -hmm. and Ryan and Nikki. One of the first meetings we had, we're all sitting there and Emily has her paper out and she's like, she's like listening to us and we're, we're shooting the ideas back and forth. Don't you remember that? <laughs> I do. Okay, and then at the end of it, you're like okay so Joe you're gonna do this right you're gonna do this Ryan yeah. you're doing that and then I'm gonna look into this okay go let's go except the one thing I'm gonna correct is it wasn't a pen and paper it was a laptop it was a laptop <laughs> okay yeah, sorry nice she's uh, yeah sorry so, okay no, but that's then what, what happened no we didn't do our homework mm, exactly so wow. that's sort and of and then you had to bring the hammer down yeah mm -hmm. and I'm I, and that's a really good point too <laughs> thanks for bringing that up because I think um you know with how busy Nikki and Ryan and everybody was um, we really needed somebody to bring the hammer down. To manage right. all sure, of us, like, yeah. Hey, this follow up on stuff. You follow up, manage. Yep. And not kind of let things slide. And yeah. that's, you know what, when a company gets to a certain point, that all that type of stuff had to be leveraged out through exactly. a general manager. Yep. Nope. Absolutely. So, okay, Emily, <laughs> we're going to throw a question at you. So putting COVID aside and mm -hmm. just like focusing on Revel, yep. uh, that first month, what would you say was like the biggest challenge? With um, with coming in and, and looking at everything and what sure. we had done in the last five years. Sure. What was, yeah. the, what was like priority one, guys? This is what I'm doing? Um, I mean, respectfully, it was just a little bit of a hot mess. Um, <laughs> I, I, I was wondering yeah. if that word was going to come out. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I just sort of centralized where yeah. everything is stored, right? Everybody yeah. had their own systems, but it wasn't in a in a state that it was collaborative. Yeah. So, you know, the deals department had their own way of, of storing files. So you, and accessing you looked documents. at all of it and I yeah. remember you talked to me, what do you do? What do you do? Okay, yep. How do you do it? Okay. Yep. You talk to where this do you this, store rebel and you just brought stuff. it all together where, you know, where, where does accounting store accounting forms? Yeah. Where does marketing keep their marketing collateral? Yeah. And I just sort of brought everything together and it's just a little bit more fluid that way, I think. So just organizing. She's, re she's really good at systems yeah. and, and implementing. <laughs> and uh, even even right from my, I think I showed you my Revel attendance because I had the training. And <laughs> they come to attendance and I was keeping attendance and I remember showing you my tracker and, and it was just like, you know, typical Emily was just pieces like pieces of paper. You know, no, we have to do something different here. Yes. So it was like it was like in ten minutes she had a completely new chart and it looked so much better. Yeah. And so I yeah. mean, no fault of your own, no, but, but you have my strength. Out. That's not my strength. Yeah. And so I admit. I just figured, you know, as we grow and some people are going to be attending these classes virtually now, we need a way to to track things online versus mm -hmm. yeah. taking attendance in person. And that's just one example. Yeah, so Andrew and and Andrew is um, head of recruitment. So you worked with Emily alongside Emily for more, mm -hmm. like the onboarding, right? Because mm -hmm. remember yeah. our onboarding was a bit all over too, oh, and yeah. you took it yeah. all and structured it yeah. better. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Well, yeah. So it, it took even it took probably a good month to be like, wait, what are you doing? Wait, <laughs> even even Nikki was like, hold on, what are you doing? And you know, just finding the systems as you know, as soon as a recruit comes in. Or, an, um, um, you know, somebody, you know, from an administrative standpoint, as, as soon as somebody new is approaching the brokerage, where do they go? Who do they get in front of? Yeah. And, and, and what kind of follow-up is in place? And then Emily kind of uh, worked with me in that regard mm -hmm. to set everything up so it's nice and fluid. Because it, even from us, yeah, we could, we could easily lose track of people. But even from, from somebody coming in standpoint, they're mm -hmm. like, okay, th this brokerage, for lack of a better word, has their... You know, stuff together. Yep. They 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 know that you know they were followed up with properly. They have the right process in 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 place, and it was seamless for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The onboarding to me, like you really tighten that up when you arrived because, yep. like, we would recruit people, but mm -hmm. even the recruiting mm -hmm. too. Like, we mainstream that nice presentation, yep. um, so everybody has the same experience. So when they meet with with Andrew or myself or somebody else, yep. the head coaches have have the same recruiting presentation now, um, and then right from when they want to sign the contract which yep. you do yeah so you you've t you took over that role um like everything is like now they go to paula and then exactly. even like i had an uh, um an onboarding checklist because everyone has to remember when revel started like there was 10 of us <laughs> so i was kind of like 
I don't know. It's I was, been updated. I, 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 I tried to help Nikki and Ryan as much as I could, yeah. but I, I don't have a lot of the skills you have. Um, but we had some systems and there was loopholes, right? For sure. Um, but you just took this like onboarding uh, system. And I remember when I you sent it to me to review and all of us, I was like, this is beautiful. <laughs> I was like gonna cry like it was so organized so for me I think that you guys were doing a bang up job given the circumstances but I think what needed to happen is clear role definitions so I think there was some crossover with the two of you both both doing um, interviews both doing one on ones um, and I just wanted to clearly define who's doing what um, and also eliminating how many people the potential recruit is interacting with because that can get a little bit overwhelming um, and confusing if they have to interact with five six different people so just sort of clearly defining who does what and when and mm-hmm. having checklists at every stage just make sure we don't forget anything she's amazing <laughs> um, so there's also been some new hires like yeah. some new people so ta- I'm going to Cheyenne right away because yep. you and Cheyenne <laughs> work like I thought we're see, two peas in a pod I haven't been at the office in a while so there's an office right beside you yes that you, you can kind of hear a lot. We talk you, through the wall. Mm-hmm. I thought that was <laughs> Dean's office. We put Cheyenne in there because she originally was taking over one of the offices on on your side. Okay. And I found myself just running back and forth every single day. And I was like, she's too far from me. I need her. So right there's next been to me. some shuffling. Yes. So where's Dean now? Kick him they're out. They're sharing. They're, they're oh, roommates. They're, sharing. they're roommates right now. Okay. Yeah. See, I've been working from home since COVID hit. So yeah. I think I've been in the office like four <laughs> or five times, right? Yeah. There's been a lot that's changed um, um, new positions who else did we hire we, so, we hired, have... so Cheyenne is our marketing and PR specialist yeah. um, we have since hired Kate Dunham who is our office coordinator so mm-hmm. she's kind of Paula's right hand woman yeah um, she's also very organized very experienced um, with Google Drive and systems and, and processes so she's going to be super helpful to me I think when I get a little bit overwhelmed um, so she's a great hire. Um, we also decided that Ryan was in need of two assistants. Yes. So one to take care of I'm his just resale glad business. I, I don't have to help yeah. him anymore. He has all this help. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And then we've also hired a new construction specialist to help round out that program. That's awesome. Yeah. Unless so lots of new people. Rosley. Rochelle. Rochelle. Yeah. 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 Rochelle, yeah. Rochelle yeah. helps uh, uh, Barbara Ann. Yeah. It's yeah been in accounting. A huge help for Barbara Ann. I'm Absolutely. Sure. And Nikki as well. Yeah. Uh, Andrew and I talked about uh, not last week's episode, but the first episode back, just how Revel as a company, when COVID hit, really just hammered down and started hiring and and For took sure. that time that we were yeah. kind of slow to restructure and get peep the right people in the positions when some other companies were letting people go. So, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. So happy to say we did not lay off anybody. Nope. Yeah. Um, in fact, we took the time, the, the, the slowdown, um, as time to restructure our marketing, um, our staffing, just yeah. sort of everything on the back end so that we yeah. could hit the ground running when the market picked back up. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Yeah. Are we going to talk about Ryan at all? <laughs> I'm happy to talk about Ryan think, whenever uh, you want to. <laughs> a podcast wouldn't be a podcast without talking, without talking about, about Mr. Saravelli. Yeah. So right, big Rye. what was your first impression of Ryan? Oh my God, this is going to go right to his head. Um, obviously, very charismatic. Um, oh, I hate that word. Which is, he is, isn't he? He's got he, that. Just, he has this essence. Um, yeah, he, yeah. You know, he gets people excited. He has an energy. Yeah. Enthusiasm. Yeah, exactly. So He's got he has, a passion for the company. It really right, comes absolutely. out the first yeah. two minutes and of talking. It's very inspiring hearing him talk. Yeah. So he can convince anyone to do anything, I think. Yeah. And I think that that's exactly how I felt when I met him as well. Yeah. Um, actually, I was talking to Nikki before I even was talking to Ryan. Oh, yeah. And then when I met Ryan, it was just, it was just what he believed in the company so much and he believed in the growth. Yep. And he believed in what I could do. And it just, it really sold me. And I knew that I wanted to, he inspired me so much that I wanted to get involved from the back end and yep. really start to help Revel grow as a company as well. For sure. And, and I think when he, when he, when we had that time to, to restructure roles and find, you know, efficiencies and gaps. Mm-hmm. Uh, and from the management down to the realtors, I, I think a lot of people were scared about what was going to happen. Like a lo- there's a lot of change happening. Yep. But I think Ryan and, and us and, and just uh, the ability to embrace that change was, was huge. Yeah. 
Absolutely. I also love that he believes in youth. So me being quite young myself, Cheyenne being very young, you know, Mm -hmm. Kate, all of our recent hires, Andrew, you're quite young yourself. Um, (laughs) It's it's actually, it's very empowering that, that he sort of believes in people and it's, it's just empowering. Well, we have to bring the the young ones in because we were a young brokerage six years ago. It was like the young, cool place to be. And some people actually said, oh, I can't go, you know, they wanted to switch. Oh, it's a young brokerage. I don't know if I'll fit Mm -hmm. in until we have so many people now. Obviously we have all different ages yes uh but I, I joke around with them i say well you know we're over 40 now like we have to start bringing them the 30 year olds in to keep this like, to keep this right. young yeah because yeah. we're, we're uh, getting a little gray i well, think revel's young at heart yeah but that's we're young exactly at heart right. Rev- yeah realtors of all ages of course yeah. he changes his clothes a lot right he does he also takes two hour haircuts two hour haircuts mm-hmm. lots of outfit changes yeah just want to give that, that day yeah. that he has on his head i know <laughs> Cuts it. It's got to be like it, it takes Pristine. more, yeah, a lot longer than my haircuts. Yeah, yeah. Oh got, no, kidding. I just got to talk about that. Um, okay, so why don't we? You know what? What about Friday frenzies? <laughs> Let's talk about one of the first Friday frenzies that, that you I've were done? involved with. Oh man! And then merging to our zooms. So I don't know if our listeners know about Friday frenzies, but once a month, we'll talk um, we like to get all of our realtors together just as sort of a team building and fun activity, yeah. um, just for, so everyone gets to know each other. Um, so we do an activity every Friday, or sorry, one Friday of every month. Last Friday of the month. Last, Last Friday. Friday of every month. Um, so one of my first Friday frenzies, I was actually asked to do an online cooking tutorial, um, <laughs> which is a first for me. I've never done a cooking tutorial at all. Um, and it was during COVID, mm-hmm. so we couldn't physically get together, but we yes. still wanted to do something fun as a group. Mm-hmm. So I decided to cook pasta and have everybody follow along. Um, I think Emily Berry might have struggled a little bit with following. So that was the month the that I launched my cooking show I launched my cooking show which I had really bad ratings and it didn't last <laughs> but it was the same month I remember we were trying to think of a Friday frenzy but we had done a couple remember guys the trivia yeah. nights yep yeah so yeah, the first, um, the, the the first, first Friday first frenzy one. when we were all in quarantine um, that was funny. Nikki thought of this and it was such genius because everybody was so down and out and, yep. and quarantined at home and we I think we we might have had about 15 or 20 people join yep. with their families and spouses and we did like a trivia game yep. on I, I forget what it's called Jack in the box. Jack, Jack in the box. In the box yeah. yeah. And it was a lot of fun. Uh, but then they thought of this cooking and I didn't know how it would work out. Oh, me neither. <laughs> but everybody had their laptops in their kitchen and we all joined each other and Emily showed us how to cook and we did a really good pasta. Yeah. My kids loved it. Yeah. It yeah. was really good. It was sausage and rapini orecchietti. Yeah. So Ooh. tell us how, like, do you cook? Is this like a hobby? Why are you so good at cooking? So I was one of those people that became an at home chef during COVID. Um, Um, I was at home and I figured I have all this extra time on my hands. Plus Mm -hmm. I find cooking to be quite therapeutic. So I taught myself how to make bread. Mm -hmm. Um, I was cooking like really great meals every night. (laughs) I just figured why not? I I don't know. It's not therapeutic. Yeah. I don't know. I was cooking because I I, I wasn't doing anything else. Right. And I don't know how therapeutic it was for me. But But you must have learned like a little something something. You know what? I learned stuff. I I did learn stuff. I I know a couple things. You know that you're using the wrong knives. I I I know. I don't know how to use (laughs) knives. I you're using a bread knife. A zester. I learned what a zester (laughs) is. Uh, But you know what? For me, was thought was just a miniature (laughs) tooth grater. Uh, It's not. But I liked you know what hanging out with my family and 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 attempting to cook was was fun. fun. And I think we all look back at those months. We're all going to remember certain things, right? For sure. And uh, we I cooked. Um, So what do we have in store? So we just did a go kart. Did you go? Yeah, I did go go karting. I couldn't go go karting. It was a riot. It was yeah. so much fun. Yeah. Um, I felt perfectly safe. We all had masks, hair nets. Okay. Um, we took the proper precautions. Um, and I haven't been go karting since I was a child. And I think back then <laughs> I was probably riding in like a kitty version. So these things go fast. I didn't. I don't know if you guys have been. Yeah. They go pretty fast. And people are banging into you and trying to get past you. And I'm trying to get past people. And it was really fun. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, that's scary. Yeah. Okay. So, so sorry. Okay, yeah. So, what? How, how important do you think it is um, to maintain and continue these Friday frenzies even during the COVID? Because I mean, like, you know, we're all trapped at home. Obviously, yeah. we found ways to do it. But how do you know how important? 
I think think more important than in Mm -hmm. a normal circumstance. I think um, people who are at home sort of self-isolating, if you will, um, have the tendency to check out like personally and professionally. So in order to keep our realtors positive and looking for new ways to to generate business instead Mm -hmm. of just sort of sitting back and doing nothing, I think that seeing their peers in a social setting whether it's virtual, like, I mean, obviously it was, right. it was online. Um, I think that that inspires, um, inspires them to, to pick themselves up by their bootstraps and, and keep going. So I think it was very yeah. important that we continue that. I totally agree. Yeah. yeah awesome. Absolutely. And then same thing with the education, right? We want to, not only do we want to keep them sharp on a per, uh, professional level, For sure. but also on a mental and social level. Yep. And I like, would you agree that sometimes your Revel Ed virtual classes, the attendance was crazy, like way more than you would see in person because people have all this extra time. Mm -hmm. um, So they're, they're brushing up on their training. They were all home and all joining. I think, I think to learn, but then also because they didn't have anything else going on. Right. Right. And it's just another way to see somebody's face and just interact with somebody. And yeah, I think it's great. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Before we get into our next topic, we're just going to take a quick break and uh, we'll be right back Okay, we're back. Thanks for sticking with with us, everybody. We really appreciate it. Um, you know what? Like the main topic on basically everybody's you know mind over the last six months is obviously COVID, right? And and how you know how are people pivoting or switching up or mm-hmm. or adapting? And I think one of the biggest things with between uh, you know the brokerages that are kind of staying stagnant and the ones that are succeeding is that they were able to, they weren't sitting stagnant and they were mm-hmm. able to adapt to the change. Mm-hmm. And for a company like Revel, who's known for their team culture, known for how we support our agents, known for the parties, known for the charities and all these, uh, our, our magazine, right? You know, mm-hmm. it's, we're known for bringing people together in the traditional sense. And we had to quickly adapt and learn how can we still build and foster that culture in the digital space. So, you know, what are some of the things that, you know, you, you implemented um, and, and that Revel is implemented from a digital standpoint? Yeah. So normally we would do um, a Revel style magazine once a year um, right. due to COVID. We likely won't be able to have a launch party for that, yeah. but that's not going to stop us from putting out a digital version of the same magazine. Um, our theme for this year is Adapt in Style. So we will actually touch Very on... Very fitting. Great segue. Yeah. We're going to touch on some of the craziness that is 2020. Yeah. Because seriously, oh what a year. Um, so it'll touch on social issues, COVID-19, um, just sort of how everything has been thrown at us this year and what we're doing about it. Um, so yes, yeah, and there's definitely room for advertisers. Um, if anybody's interested in placing an ad in our digital Revel style magazine, we have about 10 spaces left and advertisements are $500 for a full page ad, which is roughly 75% less than what a typical print ad would run you. So opportunities so do you know how um <laughs> do you know how the digital maybe you know maybe you don't do you know how the digital magazine would work is it just like a link or is it a website yeah or? so we're gonna host it on our website we will oh, also cool. put it out through social media um all of our realtors have their own various networks that they'll blast the magazine mm-hmm. out to um but it'll live on our website um and it'll be like a like a online book version of our magazine that you can flip through cool so yeah 
So this is one of the things that set, really sets Revel apart is that we have a magazine. And mm-hmm. going back, because I have been with Revel for s- almost six years now, five and a half years. <laughs> um, so I've, I've been through a lot of these uh, magazine launches. Yep. And if some people don't know, th- we do a launch video. Did you, do you know about this? I yeah. think I might have seen the fourth okay. one. <laughs> so, so Dean will write a script. We have, yep. a, we have a little show at Revel. And not many people might know this, but we have a show called The Brokerage. Oh, that's right. And Dean writes scripts. Yep. We've been doing this for probably four years, yep. I'm going to say. And he writes a script. We uh, film it at the office. We have to cast people. And I have to direct the, these videos, and it's very stressful. And then Joe, my husband Joe, edits it together, and then we do the little intro, kind of like The Office, but it's the brokerage. And then we play this at the launch party. Right, 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 right. And it merges into last year was super cool because it was the Jen Blakely uh, video with yep. that really cool song and all the clips of everybody. And I, I just thought last year was like I the ultimate. Cried. It was amazing. <laughs> um, it was an emotional <laughs> video, um, but people love it. And we yep. would pack all these people in Revel, and then, ev- and then we play the video on all the screens. And it's, it's one of my favorite things. I mean, we do a lot of stuff that I say that, but it's one of my favorite Dean. things. And yeah. so as, I, as I'm talking, I'm wondering, hmm, I wonder if Dean can write a script and we can still he maybe do an episode. I'm cast as a character this oh. year. So... Stay wow. tuned. I was always <laughs> one of the co-stars, and I bet mm. I'm being replaced. <laughs> Another Emily's. I, bet I only got I'm cameos. Being <laughs> Let's switch that up this year. Yeah, I only had cameos. I was kind of like the uh, the hyper. Like uh, I don't know. Have you seen the episodes? Did you see what I like threw the papers, and I was frustrated. I've seen the one from from the last magazine. There launch, was yes. one written where he wouldn't <laughs> tell me the theme of the magazine, and I was like, "What's the theme?" Yeah. And we were hunting in his office, oh and then gosh. Joe was tied up in like a. a closet with like you know Nikki hanging the light bulb and I was like what is it and I was slapping him around oh my goodness we had so much fun so you know what I wonder if Dean will watch this this podcast and he's probably already thinking of something something. but we can probably still do a digital online launch Oh, party? I think we will think of something. Yep. Absolutely. We'll think of something because that's what we do. Honestly, it's we do one stuff. of my favorite things about Revel is just how much fun we layer into our work. Yeah. Like who else does these videos, right? Like yeah, no, I agree. it's so much fun. And at least you got so. one, you got one big party with us so far. Yeah. You got the Christmas yeah, party. Christmas yeah, party. The- she was at the Christmas party. I was at the launch and the yeah. Christmas party. Yeah. The launch and yeah. the Christmas party. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. We were in talks way back That's last right. October. I think That's it was. Right. Yeah. So you were at that launch party. I'm telling you about I it. Was. Like you weren't there. And you're like, I'm like, I was totally there. I'm just letting you, you go and keep you explaining. Forgot. Okay. I, yeah, I, no, it was a great time though. I get confused. Really great time. <laughs> <Dyer sometimes. laughs> okay. Um, so we're launching it. We did launch a new website. We did. You yeah. had a big hand in that. Wow. I did. Yeah. So another thing when I joined Revel is I just noticed our website was always great. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but there was just a couple areas that we needed improvement. So I figured why not migrate our site onto a platform that we can more regularly update. update. Um, and then that just sort of spiraled into, we are redoing the entire website. So. <laughs> you remember the first month you joined and Ryan was like all stressed because you were like buying stuff all the time? I was just changing everything that I touched, everything I saw. I was like, nope. I remember this. running into him in the hallway. He was like, Emily's like, I got to buy all this stuff. She wants me to buy this equipment and then I got to spend all money and do this. And I'm like, but she, you you asked her to do this. This He's, is what we need, Ryan. She's like, yeah, I know. He's like, yeah, yeah. I know. The running so joke funny. is that everything I touch. Can I I have the business visa. I just, yeah, I need more money. I need more money. <laughs> it's all good. Ryan. Yeah. So I'm excited about the website. I did have a yeah. sneak peek I yesterday. Ran- I randomly typed it? it in yesterday because yeah. I was doing a virtual, uh, no, not a virtual, an in-house brokerage tour for yeah. a potential recruit. And I was just typing it in. I'm like, take a look at it. So different, take a look right? At our brand new website. <laughs> Perfectly planned. Yeah. I know. So Took we did a, a soft bit launch. To navigate again, but yeah. So we did a soft launch at the end of last week, um, just to make sure that everything's working properly and everything looks great. So we are launching it, I guess, right here, right now. Um, but you'll hear about it on social media soon. Okay. Super yeah. cool. And yeah, guys, yeah. there's um, some really cool videos that are in the works, right? 
um, Absolutely. that Dean wrote some scripts for. We yep. have two of them finished. Yep. Yes. So we're on a big recruiting push right now for Join the Revolution. And so these commercials yeah. are sort of running in tandem with our new website. And mm-hmm. it's just a whole new look for Revel. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, with the help of Dean scripting them, Joe was a huge part in getting these videos done. So he spent hours on them. But let me just let everybody know what happens when these videos go out. So I just want to let everybody know <laughs> or, or the, the scripts. So head management gets these scripts emailed mm-hmm. by Dean. And then nothing happens. I have That's to. That's where I come in, Emily. <laughs> but I have to. Ca- I had to cast people this time. Yep. And I'm reading this one script and it's fabulous. And I'm going, Joe, like, what's going? Like, I think I got to cast these people, right? And then I texted Dean and a few people. They're like, Yeah, can you cast? I'm like, Yeah, I'm a cast. I'm a director now. I, I love <laughs> You're to a do casting this. Director. So then I I put it on the. We have a a private Facebook page. Mm-hmm. I said I, I said now casting, casting call. you know <laughs> slimy car salesman, yep. older lady, funny girl next door, and I thought this was so much fun. I thought I'm gonna get so many people audition <laughs> for my roles for my my yeah. video, and I got like nobody volunteering, and I, I had think to the nerves come out. <laughs> I got the people. super cool guy. <laughs> I had to totally go after Actually, people. Actually, I saw your bit, and it's really good. That's not it's, bad. I've got have a little you seen active, it? I got a little acting training behind this. So. <laughs> well, you were road in it. But I, there was a few roles I had to find people. It was really yeah. hard. I had to recast Slimy Salesman like three times. It was hard. And people were like, yeah, I'll do what, it. Is that what John Kane was? And John, you know what? The only reason I knew John would do it, and I know he would do it really well. Yeah. But he was, he had a pretty big part in a couple of our videos last year. So I thought I want to give somebody else a chance. Yeah. So I, I hit up a few other people I thought would be great. And they just they got nervous. Yeah. And then so like it was the night before the shoot, and I text John Kane at midnight. I'm like, hey buddy. <laughs> I, I need said, you. I need you to act tomorrow. I'm sending you a script. Yeah. He's like, I'm in, you know, because yeah, I know he would do it. Yeah. And, and, you and too. he did so hey, good. We need a guest for tomorrow. I'm yep. in. I'm <laughs> yeah. And Anthony Fior. Yeah. yeah. Do you love great. him? Isn't he great? I love him. He's is he one of your best. favorite people? He is one of my if favorite If I'm having people. a bad day, I like text him like, can you come over? I know. <laughs> can you have a social distance visit in the backyard? I know. Bring me a latte. I know. He's already there before you hang up the phone. Yeah. yeah. No, he's, he's really good. Um, well, what I, what I love about this is, and you touched on it a little bit, is that, you know, when we're making this huge recruiting push, mm-hmm. I think that's what sets us apart from now to last year or the year before mm-hmm. is that we're, we're, we're well-grounded, well-rounded, I guess I should say. You know, we've got the podcast, we've got the, um, the commercials, the little videos, and we have our in-person meetings. And I think it's all just coming together so nicely, yep. right? And that's the whole point of these videos. But at the same time, like, look, I'm having fun today. You guys are having fun. Um, you know, the people listening to it, I'm sure, are just ecstatic, right? But then we have fun <laughs> Thank you for these watching. videos. And just because we're, we're growing so fast doesn't mean that we need to lose that, um, you know, funness, I guess. I guess. Well, real estate, I always say real estate is, is stressful sometimes, mm-hmm. a lot of times. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's a career that isn't every single day, isn't working in, you know, how you want it. There's yep. stressful days. Um, it, it's tough. And so to be at a brokerage that, you know, has a lot of people that all come together, that have fun, that do these fun events and support each other, it's, it's so important. And the Friday Frenzies, like, as soon as I joined Revel, like, we started them. We had, like, nine or ten people when we were doing those. And, yeah. it, you know, put work aside. Let's just have fun and get to know each other and support each other. And we've continued that for six years. And the, and yeah. the fact that we did not miss a month still going strong during COVID yeah. and during this pandemic is, well, is awesome. Thing, like, before you came, like we were still doing them a little bit, but like they kind of like, okay, this one's canceled. Or yeah. This one we could do, mm-hmm. but you know, you're holding our feet to the fire a little bit to go out and hang out with people. Well, it's exactly. Awesome. And that's just, it just goes with having the right people in place to make mm-hmm. sure that these things keep going. Totally mm-hmm. agree. Again, think, that's like we had people that were s- selling and, and it's yep. really hard to manage people when your full-time job is a realtor. Exactly. I think that it's important to have non-selling management in place totally just because agree. their focus then is 100% operations, making sure everything runs smoothly. Yeah. Um, whereas if you're selling on the side, it's it, it's hard because priorities are hard to sort through. So Of course. Yeah, yeah I family, agree 100%. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. I think some hobbies. of our people were stretched a little bit too thin. So I'm glad that I'm able to ease the burden of some people. That's awesome. Yeah. That's definitely helped. That's for sure. Do you want to tell us, Emily, uh, maybe because you have a lot of insight with with uh, with Revel right now is kind of the direction that we're heading? 
Well, right we're now? in full growth mode. Yeah. So we've sort of been spending the last three months just making sure we have all of our ducks in a row, um, everything in place so that we can just really push the pedal to the metal on growth. So we've got a few offices still to come, hopefully in 2020. I'm not going to reveal the locations, but... I don't um, even know them. Ooh. I'm yeah. not even letting the... I don't <laughs> even know this stuff one. anymore. You yeah, know more than so me. I think I didn't know about our last one. I found Fort out Erie. at the meeting. Yeah. Yep. So we just launched Revel Fort Erie. Um, I believe it was Friday. 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 That's um, so that's our eighth location um, after Grimsby, of course. Um, so we are just really filling out, and there's more to come. So stay tuned. Wow. Yeah, that's very yeah. exciting. And I like the, you know, the Fort Erie. Um, uh, you, the, the team there is just phenomenal. Casey and Marge. Right? Casey, Casey and Marge, Marge yeah. Um, I've just heard nothing about ama- but amazing things. We'll definitely yeah. have them on the podcast, yeah, right? We want to have all the head said, coaches. No way. Yeah. That's, that's an just the most down to earth people. Yeah. Tons and you're of experience. The gap as well, right? Yeah. From, from Fort Erie, Lake Erie to. Exactly. We, talk, we talked about Fort Erie a couple years ago. I remember, Ryan, we were sitting around going, oh, it'd be cool to have an office out in Fort Erie. Yeah. But I think the great, like, we, we wait for the right people. Exactly. You know? Exactly. You have to have the right people in there to, to not only represent the company, but to, like, attract, you know. Be dedicated to growth and recruitment. And yeah, it's, it's a big responsibility, yeah. right? Opening yeah. opening an office. Yeah. So, yeah. and, yeah, they seem super nice. I have not even talked to them yet. I want to get them on the They're show. Just on the call. Line them up. The call, they are yeah. fabulous. We'll get them on, for sure, absolutely. Yeah. Very cool. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So. Is that about it? <laughs> <laughs> Is that about it for today's podcast? I, I think so. I think no, but so. you know what? That was, uh, this was an amazing episode. Emily, thank you so much. It was you know, not even a day's notice. So <laughs> I look really forward to another it. Friday frenzy cooking. I'm waiting. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll try to put one together. Let's yeah, try. Yeah, I guess we got to do like one where, you know, like a couple of weeks in advance, we all go out and buy the same stuff. Or is that what you did yeah, before? That's what that's we did. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You post, just I, post a recipe. Where were you? My family had a scheduled <laughs> Zoom party that night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, sure, whatever, Andrew. <laughs> Andrew. You're so scared to cook. I was even like trying to flip back in between. But yeah. like, when I flipped back, you guys were like cooking. I'm like, oh, yeah, it's the cooking one. I'm yeah. Like, yeah but didn't you, you guys funny. had the baby that month, though. And like, you had a busy month. Yeah. Yeah. It was a little crazy. You're off the hook. You had a baby. We all sat down and ate our dinner together after on zoom it was it was so cute cute. yeah because we hadn't been out at restaurants with each other and we just put our laptops we were eating and talking it was was almost like we were all together right yeah yeah Yeah. sometimes the best networking is when you're just doing it as friends exactly Um, okay well thank you very much for coming on the show thank you guys uh for (laughs) hanging out with us today thank you emily Barry, my co-host uh, we really appreciate your time. And as always, if you have any questions about joining the revolution, feel free to reach out to one of us or careers at revelrealty.ca. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thanks. Guys. Okay. All right. That was cute. That was good. That was yeah. yeah. No, we put out some good info. I think it was good. I tried. <laughs> you did awesome. You did good. You did good. Yeah. Uh, I really, I just can't